The microchip booth here at the Embedded World Nuremberg 2017. And who are you? Hi, I'm Lucio Diaz. I'm the business development manager for Europe for microchip technology. So microchip is a pretty big booth here and uh, in the previous year you, you acquired Atmel, right? Yes, we did. So that's a lot of technologies you integrated? Sure. Actually, well, in the last uh, three years we did seven acquisitions. So Atmel is just the biggest one. So you can see there's a lot of new products here, microchip, of course, and uh, so much more than just the PIC, where, which is the, you know, the, the famous uh, product of microchip and the one most of uh, you know, your readers and uh, listeners will be familiar with, right? So, but now you also have AVR from uh, Atmel and yes. you also have uh, yeah. arm, arm, uh, arm solutions, right? Yes, Atmel brought a lot of new solutions, a lot of new IP into the company, also uh, manufacturing processes, factories, and very good technology. Um, definitely, we should talk about the fact that we have now together the PIC and the AVR architectures. I think those are the two most beloved architectures out there in the 8-bit world. And also, we have uh, a lot of new ARM chips, definitely, uh, with the acquisition. We already had uh, all the licenses before and some products there, but definitely a big boost to the 32-bit product line. So, for example, you have right here, uh, you have a Cortex-A. Yes. Yeah, uh, I mean, if you want to look at MPUs, uh, we have here Darren Wen, and he can tell you more, for example, of our MPU solutions using the A5 uh, core. Hi, so my name is Aaron Wen. I'm an Apps engineer based in the UK. I've been working with Microchip for about 14 years now. So, uh, what we've got here is some of our uh, SAM A5 D2 processors, which is. Uh, so it's right here? Yep. Yeah. And this. Well, World class. This is World a class. this is ARM Cortex A5 Cortex with, trust zone. with trust zone implemented. And so uh, I can show you that in a second. So we we've been involved obviously via Admel and acquisition of Admel. We've been involved with the ARM core since around 2002. So oh, you know, there it is. 2002. Exactly. So uh, we've got a long history there. Microchip and Microchip and Admel actively involved in the development of the Linux kernel on uh, the SAM A5 parts and on the A5 cores. We contribute made back to the main line, make a policy of doing that. We have no strange uh, vendor trees for our Linux solution. So just an example here that one of the nice things about the A5 is uh, on these particular parts is the level of integration on here. We have L built in LCD uh, controllers, we have graphics acceleration, we have Class D audio amplifiers built into the part. So providing significant levels of integration for a customer. Um, here we're running graphic solutions with uh, Qt and Frank. And, he, and here it's showing some uh, trust zone demonstration right here. Exactly. Uh, what is the demo here? So, so the particular demo we've got here is in conjunction with a third party called Secata Labs. Um, they're one of our great uh, third parties that we use. And this is just an example of their product called Core T, uh, which provides uh, uh, a secure and, and uh, trusted execution environment. I mean, you can see here one of the classic things that probably people are aware of with Linux is you can try and do a code injection into the kernel. Well, we've got. Uh, intrusion countermeasures and integrity check monitors in the part so we can try and inject some code into the Linux kernel by this little application and there we go we've detected it uh, I've seen it on the left hand side and on the right hand side the trusted execution environment detects the fault and reboots the Linux kernel. So you have the trusted executed environment but it's a uh it's, uh, it's called you call it Secutor Core T. Yes, yeah, so it's not the open source one, right? No, this this yeah. is a this is a payable product. But then, what is security worth to you? How much is it worth to your customers? And you can see here some of our third parties that are uh, have great products, uh, including banking solutions uh, using the SAM A5 D2. So uh, it's out there in many many things. Indeed. For security, and yep. this is just on the Cortex A, and there might be some. Uh, there, also, coming in the future. there certainly will be some parts coming along in the future. All right, great. Thanks a lot. And uh, if we go around, there's even more microcontrollers on here. I'm just going to go over here. Check it out. Thanks. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. So, so what are you showing around here? Yes. So, so what you see here is a little demonstration. We tried to show uh, one of the technologies that we have included in our new ARM devices in some of our Cortex-M0 parts, but also in the AVRs and in the PIC microcontrollers. This technology is called Core Independent or Event System, basically. And what we show here is, uh, is a bit expanded, what would be inside a microcontroller. 
you okay. see some uh, digital and some analog input peripherals, some programmable logic inside a chip, and also some output uh, peripherals or some output kind of uh, the devices. And what you see here is the wiring, basically, that you would uh, need to perform, uh, you would need to connect properly to get an application going. And uh, what we see is basically a way to visualize what the core independent peripheral concept is. With these wires, actually, these are connections established inside a micro, right? So we connect the inputs, the outputs, and the logic directly, peripheral to peripheral, without the intervention from the microcontroller. So, that, no, no. This, so this is hardware, but it's configured in live, in runtime. So every one of these wires is a bit that actually is set in a configuration register. And all this actually is inside a micro, and it, you can find it in our Cortex-M zeros, in our SAM devices, and you will find it inside our AVRs and our PIC micros. Right? If I go around here, let me try to jump in there. I'm looking at some of the actually connect to any of our yeah. So here's an example. Yeah, this is a little bit of a yeah. complete complete ecosystem if you want. So a lot of very uh, simple evaluation boards there, a low cost evaluation board, very accessible to all, and they range from 8-bit micros all the way to AVR 8-bit micros all the way to SAM devices again. So you see there a SAM D21, for example, which is a Cortex M0 5 volt device uh, with the core independent peripherals. Those little boards that you see on top, those are the click boards from Microelectronica, okay, which is a partner with us on this. There are 280 of these little sensors okay. and actuator boards, and you can plug them directly into all of our demo sure. just, uh, just so, so, can, so you can easily plug them in. So here you see them connected to a SMD21, for example. You see two of them connected here. And it's very easy to build a prototype, a quick demonstration. In a matter of minutes, you can have a demo for your boss and show him, hey, this is how I can implement something that connects via, say, GSM. Uh, this sensor and does some IoT-ish uh, kind of performance. So you did standard kind of connectors? Yes, the standard connector was defined by Microelectronica. It's called the Microbus. Yep. And we added this connector to all our demo boards, all of them, basically, from 8-bit to 32, Cortex, AVR, and PIC. Nice. Now, if you want to follow me, I can show you also some new devices. Yeah. So we, we continue here. Yeah, we continue our commitment to 8-bit. Uh, there, is, there is still an enormous amount of, uh, enormous volume of 8-bit product being used and consumed in the industry nowadays. So we keep the innovating there. And we have a commitment also to continue both lines of 8-bits, PICS and ADR at the same time. So here at the show, we're showing, again, as we did in November, we did at Electronica, and now here in Embedded World, we're showing side-by-side -side new parts. This is a brand new ADR called the Tiny 1617. And this one is basically an X mega generation ADR squeezed into a tiny package and format. So an X mega set of features, event system, all the cool new features of the X mega really squeezed into one tiny device itself. And no, it, it, well, it is, of course, using the latest process, but it is still 5-volt capable, and it is still backward compatible with the previous generations of uh, Tiny's and X-Mega. Uh, you also see on the next side, of the, okay, on the other side of the, uh, the board, of the wedge, you see two new devices, a new PIC-18 and a new PIC-16. <laughs> this is the first PIC-18 to actually include DMA and vectored interrupt. And this okay, is a nice. new entry-level family of PIC 16s with all of the core independent peripherals at once. But uh, offered is it a demo or you can type in on the... Is it okay if I yeah, so, yes, it's okay if they sign yeah. up, you can get a piece of sure. So we're actually giving away this little... There's not a bugger, there's a programmer and uh, there's a... So these boards, these are the Express series. And it's a very uh, interesting little concept. It's a very nice hobby prototyping board. Uh, could be handy also for you know some wearable uh, applications, for example. And what it comes with is a little uh, loader. Uh, we call it an MSD loader or Express loader. As soon as you connect this board to your PC, it behaves as a hard drive. And then you can drag and drop files on it, and it will program it immediately. And as soon as it's finished programming the device, it actually behaves as a virtual serial port. Bless you. <laughs> so, so this is using a PIC or the AVR? 
This one is using a pick, and uh, it, it is the, the lowest cost, the easiest uh, entry level device you can find for prototyping quickly with a, so with a pick. How, how do people choose pick, AVR, or ARM? I would say I would say that's that's a, that's the beauty of it. I mean, it's up to them. It becomes a question of personal preferences, past experience. Uh, what you did in school sometimes, you know, prepares you to prefer one rather than the other. And I, honestly, the, the the split out there is uh, is 50-50 from what we see between AVRs and PICs. It's uh, literally comes down to that. To Usually, the eight bits are cheaper than the 32-bit stuff. Well, nowadays some of the Cortex M zeros are darn cheap. So uh, yeah, yeah. It, it's it becomes really a matter of what you need to do, what kind of per peripherals you need, and what is the application really requiring. And then you got a lot of choice out there. And uh, between Pix AVRs and Cortex uh, devices here, yeah. we have uh, just uh, uh, an, an enormous choice. Uh, we have uh, on the oh, yeah on the uh, website, just to have a little bit of an idea. We, um, what kind so, of boost do you have around here? Yeah, so this is the wireless section, yeah. which is of course enormous. We have actually two of the stations uh, dedicated to connectivity. Yeah. This is the wireless connectivity. Here you see yeah, side by side. Yeah. yeah, what you see here uh, is LoRa. I use, uh, LoRa. This is a LoRa gateway. Uh, this is also? Oh, this is a LoRa uh, <laughs> mode. They call well, it the I, I considered mode. using the... Uh, so it's a very uh, small evaluation action. board. Uh, for uh, and you can see the format is Arduino compatible, which is really. actually yeah. uh, not and, available. Uh, it's, it's the easiest way to look at this one. Actually, you can consider this radio, part. This so is Laura um, gives you enormous distances. I don't know if you're familiar with um, the app. And, and this is thanks to this this uh, particular radio technology that is using spread spectrum uh, very effectively and to get very low power and enormous Long distances. Long range. Is all Laura here or different things? Actually, we're doing a sort of integration between Laura and that device. Very different technologies, but somewhat uh, in the same space and for the same type what of What cores are used for all these? <laughs> oh, free mix of 8-bit, yeah. 16-bit, 32-bit, Cortex, MIPS, uh, yeah. all of it. We, we cover it all. So, and there is a uh, bunch of... Uh, again, uh, see, here you see an AVR running it. Uh, here you see a... Uh, Pick. This side a Pic32, so this is a MIPS side by side. This is another MIPS machine. Uh, this is a SAM. W25, so integration of a Cortex core and a radio yeah. on the same chip. Um, uh, on this side, close, yeah. you see Bluetooth. Bluetooth. Of course, Bluetooth is very, very hot. <laughs> and uh, if you go around on the other side, is uh, autonomy. Okay, this is wired connectivity, so this is uh, power over internet solutions. Uh, some of it is actually done implementing, this is done implemented, uh, implemented on an 8-bit uh, core, 8-bit pick core. And here you have um, uh, all our USB and Ethernet uh, connectivity solutions. And of course, between the acquisitions of SMSC and Micrel, our portfolio here just exploded. Um, at the show here, we're showing actually our new gigabit solutions and even a new USB-C 3.1 uh, bridge to Mega, uh, two gigabit. Are you so. part of some of the leaders in the market for that kind of stuff? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we have, uh, I believe the, they're saying that we have already now shipped something like 600 million units of... Uh, just one part. Just Of, of just a uh, Ethernet uh, 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 Max and Fies, basically. So just a microchip is for sure shipping billions of chips out there. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's been doing for decades. Well, our current run rates um, tell us that uh, just 8-bit alone, we're shipping more than a billion units per year. Right. And this was before the acquisition of the ADR. Of the and we're here at the Embedded World 2017. What's going to happen in the future? Is just <laughs> going to be more and more stuff happening? Oh, yes. Oh, you bet. I mean. Uh, of, of course, as you as you see the density of the yeah. uh, the visitors around our booth, you will see that the wireless obviously is the hottest one. And as you move there toward the microcontrollers, automotive also. In the automotive, you see the density just keeps increasing. Uh, we had a incredibly busy first day, and this second day already is, is uh, looking pretty. So you have R and D around the world. We do. Yeah, and uh, especially have, with the acquisitions now, you even more. Yeah, we have a lot of teams, uh, especially here uh, uh, in Europe. I would say um, new teams, of course, that we we got from the Micro, from the SMSC, from the uh, Atmel acquisitions. 
Um, but we keep uh, developing, for example, all the manufacturing of the silicon for microchip happens actually in the States, in the United States, in uh, two large, very large factories in Oregon and in Colorado. Have you been in those? Uh, yes. Is it uh, very impressive? Oh, you have to go there. It's yeah. bigger than the hall here? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. So it's big and you have to be in a clean uh, bunny suit or not? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Actually, well, yeah, if you come to our master's conference, which happens every August in Chandler, you get the bunny suit visit uh, to the, one of our factories. Uh, the factory, the Tempe factory is open for visitors That'd be cool. uh, and regularly. The quantity is being uh, fabbed out. It's just increasing all the time. And the complexity and the features yeah, yeah. and uh, new new cores being considered and worked on and stuff. It's yeah. Gonna... yeah, you can you can think of it in this in this terms basically. On a daily basis, we are manufacturing, packaging, and testing 100%. Uh, more than 5 million units just of 8-bit microcontrollers. 5 million a day. 100% nice. tested uh, out of our factory and being shipped out of there to the world. I guess this you is... don't do it by hand, right? No, no. no. Machines. <laughs> yes. And uh, R&D yeah. investments and all these things Atmel was doing, for example, is increasing now because of microchip. Yeah. So yeah, they can I... speed up the innovation, right? Yes. So we have, for example, a, a brand new innovation team, uh, basically. There was the development team in Norway, in Trondheim, which is where the AVR was born, for example. That team is amazing, and it's a, it's a very large uh, team of very, very technical, very we expert also did the developers. SAMD uh, 21 and all that stuff, right? We have a location for that in uh, France. Yeah. And um, in Germany, we have more locations with R&D. And then we have, uh, of course, in India, we have locations in the Far East, of course, uh, that are pretty large. So all Philippines, right. Malaysia, and so on. So that's, uh, there was a uh, lowest power Bluetooth in the world, lowest power Wi-Fi in the world, uh, most performance uh, Cortex M7 and all these things on yes. the portfolio right now. A5, which is uh, one of the most integrated A5s you can buy, uh, as you've seen there with the uh, graphic acceleration, with uh, uh, Class D amplifier built in. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> more, 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 for less, <laughs> more choice for your, for your readers, for your viewers.